So I have a vague idea of an overlay pack that I want to make and I thought, hey, why not show you my process, bring you along with me while I create it. The truth is there is no process, I just pretty much improvise until it looks good. So today we're going to be making this together, step by step. And as you can see, it involves taking a picture of yourself to place into the overlay. This is something that I would like more live streamers to start doing because it adds so much more personality to the whole you know, branding. Anyways, let's not talk too much. A quick message from our sponsor and then we can start working. I don't know if you heard, but Twitch recently gave people the ability to upload animated emotes on the platform, which is so cool. Now, even if you don't have access to this option, I think animated emotes could be a cool way to display like as a GIF on Twitter, on Discord, to even show off on your stream with some alerts. But finding an emote artist that also does animation or motion design is super complicated. That's why if you go to own.gg slash you can click on sub emotes and badges and click on Twitch sub emotes and you'll realize there's a bunch of pre-made animated emotes right there. Check this out. We got a white wolf animated sub emotes. There's the reaper, the lion, an angel, a CT, a unicorn, a regular dude. And of course, much, much more. I'll let you check it out at own.gg slash gal level. That is own3d.gg slash gal level. All right, so the first step is taking that picture. Now, we're gonna be working with a dark background, but that doesn't matter that much. What is important is to know that you're gonna have to cut out yourself from whatever picture you're gonna be taking. So if you have like a plain background, like a plain white wall or dark wall, that would be the best. I don't currently have that, but I trust my Photoshop skills enough to be able to cut my hair maybe out of the background. We'll see. What I personally want to do is have basically the room in complete darkness and then have one or two sources of light hitting my face max two lights max this is something that you can replicate even with a f i don't have my phone on me even with a phone you can use the flashlight take a selfie take a picture like that with the flashlight hitting your face not directly not in front of the camera you know but let me just show you nice okay so basically what i did i usually have my elgato key light pointed at the wall so i can have very soft bounce light i pointed it directly at me because um the image is mostly going to be black and white why it doesn't matter that much if my sh my skin is shiny my skin is shiny anyways <laughs> so um i'm gonna be using the windows webcam software to take the picture okay just type uh, camera right yes there you go it's a little a little lighter than in obs that should do so the background is not perfectly as dark as i would want it to be just because that light doesn't have like uh, uh, barn doors anyways so we just want to put ourselves in a certain position. I'm going to put on some glasses just to add that extra bling bling flare look to it. You can pose however you want, really. I'm going to lower the microphone and then just take a couple of shots. You can also use the timer if you have to. It's right there. Two second timer, five seconds, 10 seconds, timer off. I move the light a little bit so I can get like uh, softer. Let's see what we get here. Of course, you want to look your best while you're doing this. Alrighty, and just like that, we have a couple of shots. Let's uh, check them out. You can click bottom right here, just like your phone, basically. And uh, those are the shots that we have. It's not the best quality with the Windows thingy, but it, it should do. If you can take the picture directly, like from your phone, for example, or any other software that allows you to take high quality pictures, this is nice. I might use this one or that one, maybe. I like that one a lot. That would be cool. This one is pretty good, too. Yeah, that one has more impact, I, I feel like. All right, let's open up Photoshop and drink some water. Okay, from here, we're going to create a new file. We're going to make it uh, 1080p by, well, just 1080p. <laughs> 1080p by 1080p. Um, here, I'm going to have uh, 300 for the resolution, 16 bits, so we can have better gradients. Do you want to see my face there? Yeah, maybe you do. Let me just put the light right behind me. Okay. All right. So with our background layer selected, because there's nothing else to select, control, oops, wrong thing. Control I. Boom, that makes it dark. But what I'm going to do is just create a shape. Where is my shape tool? Right there. Hold it. Rectangle. Boom. Drag it. Okay, cool. With this thingy there, I'm going to make it rectangle, rectangle, no rounded. And we're going to make it gray. Dark gray. Nice. All right, let's go find the pictures. Camera roll, of course. 
Look at that, I have a bunch of them. And uh, we have the last pictures here. Boom, 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 boom. I have really low quality on the last one. This seems to be the one with the most, but let's use that one, for example. Okay, I can see it here. Let's drag it there. All right, control minus to zoom out. By the way, you don't need Photoshop to do any of this. You can use Photopea, for example. Uh, it has the exact same tools, like really the exact, exact, exact same tools. All right. OK, so uh, control T or control alt T if you're using Photopea. This is pretty much the placement here is going to be me on the right and then the starting soon on the left. Maybe the labels at the bottom or maybe under the starting soon. I don't I don't know yet. I don't know yet. This is the part where we improvise. All I know is I want it to be dark and gold. So press enter once you're satisfied with the size a little bit. We can make this big, but we need to remember the quality isn't that good. So we can't go too wild with how big we want it to be. I'm going to add a black adjustment layer. So I go bottom right here. I go find black and white and and I hold alt and I place my cursor in the middle of the two of them. Boom. So now everything that is in the adjustment layer is going to be bound to all the transparency pixels from that underneath layer. Basically, it's only going to affect this, right? Not going to affect anything underneath. If I wanted to, I could uh, paint like that underneath. See, black and white only affects that layer. Anyways, over explaining stuff as I do. So this is the part where you would want to cut yourself out of it, right? Because the quality is so bad, I'm guessing Photoshop is not going to do a good job selecting me out. But I can try by clicking on the quick selection tool, clicking select subject and then watch Photoshop. Tr what? OK, I I'm sorry, AI, I totally misjudge you. Um, let's create a mask. Now that this is selected and click uh, mask, it, it works. It works. It's actually not bad. So I'm going to hold alt and click on the mask so I can see what it looks like. It's not too bad. I should definitely plug in my tablet so I can clean it up a little bit. You don't have to clean it up. Another way of doing this, if you don't have puffy hair like me, is to use the pen tool. But that's a story for another time. OK, so you can go up here and um, with the mask selected. OK, so the black and white image here. I'm going to right. I'm going to open up the brush tool, press B and we're going to have yeah full hardness. That's fine. And just play with the size until you have something satisfactory. Now the mask is black hides white reveals. So you can go ahead and uh, play around with this. So I have black selected. I'm going to flip this. Boom. Now it's white. And now I can correct little parts like that. Don't overdo it. It's not that important. Also, this is just a tutorial. I'm not trying to do anything perfect right now. This is not something that I'm actually going to use. Uh, if I if I'm going to use it, like I'll probably make some something better, take better pictures, probably pull out the DSLR and uh, proper lighting. But hey, um, this is a quick way of how to do it. So I'm just going around, making sure that everything looks good. I'm pressing X to switch between Control Z, Control Z. I'm pressing X to switch between foreground and background color, which are black and white. Or you can press D to reset them if they're not black and white. And that allows me to switch between hiding, revealing or hiding, basically. And if you feel like you did a little mistake, that's completely fine. Don't overthink it. No one's going to really look at this, this detail right there. OK, so for the hair, what do I do? I can either um, go around here and make this darker. Yeah, I think that's what I have to do. Let me see. Just fine. So we already have one adjustment layer here. We're going to go and create a curves adjustment layer. We are going to hold alt in between curves in black and white. Boom, that adds it to the clipping mask. So only going to affect this and we are going to lower it until the surrounding area looks like the background color we chose for the hair. OK. And around here is actually perfect. See how it blends in. So I'm not against that. But um, do we want our skin to be like that? Actually, yes, I have maybe a little too dark. So what we can do here, since this is a mask on the adjust adjustment layer, we can play around with the transparency there, too, or the visibility, if you will. Uh, lower the hardness this time, and we're going to lower the opacity up top with the brush tool selected. And uh, now, basically, I want to pull some like some detail back a little bit. We don't need the hair to be we don't need the whole thing to be that dark. So low opacity, low hardness. We just need a brush that is big enough. <laughs> I'm struggling here. There you go. Something like that. And then let's click once. See what it does. It's lighter. Boom. 
a little lighter. Okay, not bad. All of that just so I don't have to clean up the, the hair properly. I'm going to do this and I'm just going to go where I want it to be a little light. In this case, around my face. We do know that the light is hitting somewhere in particular. I do want to get a little bit of detail on my t-shirt but not too much. Okay, that's fine. All right, this is kind of weird. So I'm gonna select the actual mask there. And I still have my low opacity brush, but that will do. And I'm basically gonna pick black and hide a little bit of that hair there. Just clicking a bunch, basically. Even smaller. All right, I'm wasting time here, okay. That's nice. It's not perfect, but it's uh, nice enough. And um, here comes the fun part. The fun part here is I want the gold on the glasses to be visible. And if I didn't have the glasses, you might be thinking, well, if I don't have gold glasses, what would I do? I was going to pick a, um, an image where I have like my eyes visible and I would literally draw like gold color on my eyes or something like that. For example, that one would definitely go in and uh, retouch it to make my eyes look like they were shining gold. Like what's this, what's this guy's name in, in Thor played by Idris Elba. So um, we know we have gold there, but that will be actually a good reference. So the black and white is what we want to affect. We can duplicate the black and white just in case. I'm gonna turn one off. So I hold alt and then drag up and then release to, to duplicate it and um remember black hide so i'm gonna pick my brush i'm gonna pick black in this case i don't want too much fuzzin fuzziness i also don't want low opacity i want it to be a hundred percent taking off of it basically like that nice and um wow actually i realized that the blue of my my glasses are so perfect i i, I don't even need to <laughs> to do much i could just leave the blue and the gold anyways let's uh go ahead and remove what we want to remove and then um the rest will be history uh once again no need to be precise here we just want a hint of gold but not much contamination i do not have my tablet i'm using a mouse right now just to prove you that you can too we can go around here but i think the light was hitting this so hard that there isn't much gold basically but we'll take whatever is on the outside that makes it look more gold. I still can't believe that Photoshop managed to cut me out of this low quality image. All right, now I'm going to switch it up. So I'm going to press X to switch to the foreground color, which is white. And I'm just going to go and make sure that I don't have that. I remove some of the blue. Because I want this overlay pack to have a um, gold. I don't know why I screamed gold like that. <laughs> a gold color scheme. So black and gold is what we're doing. The blue would probably look great, but hey, you can pick whatever color you want when you create it. So it's all about masking. There are ways to do all of that while being destructive, but I like to do non-destructive retouching. That's a lesson that you learn from doing freelance when I used to do portrait photography you can do the best job in, job in the world and then someone is like hey but i don't like this part and then you have to start over from scratch because you basically destroyed the original nope always be non-destructive boom so that's pretty cool now i have a silver chain but i would love for that silver chain to look like it's not a silver chain if possible so what i'm gonna do is instead of pulling out the same thing and doing uh this Oh, it's because of my skin. I was like, this is weird. Why is it gold there? <laughs> it's just my skin. Uh, Control Z there. I'm going to color pick something here. So I'm holding, oh, I'm going to create a new layer. Sorry. Create a new layer. Hold Alt to, to bring up the color picker while you have the brush tool selected. And pick something that kind of looks in the highlights of gold-ish. Right, something like that. Don't be afraid of going more vibrant with it. Okay. And now with your new layer selected, you can go to color. So that everything you paint is just gonna be the color. If I do this, right now it's super vibrant, but it doesn't matter that much. We're gonna change the we can change the blending mode at any point. So I'm just dragging my mouse around. Again, doesn't have to be 
very, very precise. Turns out uh, changing the vibrance was a bad idea, making it like more vibrant, more colorful, super unrealistic immediately. But we can use a hue saturation to change it or just lower the opacity once we're done. All right, super nice. Now let's bring it back. Uh, as you can see, it's more bronze than, <laughs> than gold. Let's lower the opacity and see what it looks like. Still doesn't really look gold, although it's pretty close to this. I'm going to bump it up and then I'm going to press Control U. Now we're doing hue and saturation, but destructive, right? Anything, any change we made there, it's actually applied to the to the pixels in the layer. So let's go back here and we can see that, you know, this goes from red to orange. So we need to slide it to the right a little bit if you want to get towards gold colors and we can lower the saturation by pretty much a lot. This is pretty decent. Nice. And now we can lower the opacity top right in the layer list just enough for people to see. Hey, that's gold ish. All right. Not, not, I'm not completely a huge, huge fan of it so far, but let's make it happen. Um, one thing that I do want is uh, sharpness. Right now, I don't have enough sharpness in the right places. The, the, the photo is still like low quality. Um, the bottom here, my hair, just like in real life, basically, there was less light. I would love for the background to kind of mimic that. So what I can do is create a new. What is this? OK, uh, what I can do is create a new layer on top of my background and I'm going to press B for my brush tool, make it huge, not too huge. There we go. Zero hardness opacity. We want that low because I want some control. And then we're just going to switch this one to black and uh, yeah, zoom out control minus. And basically the back of my neck here, you can tell that there's less light. So let's see what we can do about that. Now, unfortunately, um, depending on what type of composition you have, you can't really do a lot of gradients between, you know, two steps of colors. You're going to really see the gradient, even though we're working on a 16 bit environment. What you can do, though, is actually add grain, actually add noise, and that will kind of make the steps disappear. Not bad, but I don't like it. Let's lower this. OK, so so far, so good. It doesn't look great because of the steps here in the gradient, but we're going to fix that a little bit later. We'll probably add some quote unquote noise at the end of it, at the end of it all um, for the hair here. Maybe I want something now. It doesn't blend because uh, it's not perfect like, anymore, but we can go ahead and um, change that a little bit. Maybe add another curves adjustment. Yeah, let's do that. Boom, curves, it created it. It's still in the clipping mask. So if I add it, it's only going to affect this layer. So let's do this. In this case, what I'm going to do is do control I. So it inverts my whole mask. And then I'm going to go back and draw with white on it to reveal. Basically, I, I've hidden everything from the curve. So we're going to paint the darkness on the hair, <laughs> if that makes sense. All right, let's do this. Opacity 15%. That's decent. Teaching you all the techniques today, all of them. Just do that until it feels like it's blending in, doesn't have to be perfect. You know the deal. All right, not bad. Pretty cool. Let's go ahead, you know, start doing our, the rest of whatever we have to do. I have a little halo there. Is that what's going on? Yeah, text, 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 text. And we're going for something clean we're not going for the typical twitch streamer like the gamer look so let's try to go for something clean i'm gonna go and just type starting soon whatever font is currently selected okay now it's underneath everything and it's still in the clipping mask so i'm gonna bring it all the way up there you go the goal here is to make you look like a superstar right like you're on a famous actor's website or something like that or or a character and now is the part where we're supposed to pick a font <laughs> old english looks so good with this uh, oxanium the thing is I, I i have a couple fonts that i really love and i can't stop myself from just reusing them i love me some square font some bold square font but okay bebas bebas new and we're gonna add some tracking to make it look more classy here we're basically making a movie poster at this point. <laughs> what is that typo? I like that actually. Okay, now I can make it a little bigger.
Do I want some? Do I want this? Do I like this? I have a hard time with with certain fonts when it's not like futuristic or bold and square. I, I have so such a hard time. Anyways, let's try to give it a color that is something like similar or close ish to work to the gold that we're looking for. And we might go back and basically re-add the colors if we if we are not satisfied with the gold that we get. It's hard. It's hard to actually depict gold in one single color because gold is is not just a color. It's also a texture. Basically, it's a tint in a way. I think I have it. I like that. That's pretty cool. I don't know if I like the font. I don't like I don't know if I like this. The soon being here, though, like starting soon. Maybe if I add an extra word like stream starting soon. Oh, that looks like a Netflix thing. <laughs> I just realized that looks like you're on the Netflix menu and then, you know, you're you're hovering over a new show or something. I'm not against it. I like it. actually. <laughs> this is pretty cool. Yeah, I would probably have like a countdown. Something like that. Let's add some social media because it's like the easy button to kind of fill in, you know, the empty space here. And then we're going to add the labels. So social media, you can download the PNGs from Google. I have my own little stock, uh, the important ones. So Twitter. Let's find our Twitch. There you go. It doesn't matter if the colors don't match exactly right now. We're going to change the colors. Again, the order. The order of importance here is important here. <laughs> the Twitter is where I'm the most active and where people have conversations with me. So I'm going to have that first and then I'm going to put YouTube, which is my main content platform. And then I'll put Twitter uh, and then I'll put Twitch. Sorry, Something like that. We want this to be super small because the smaller it, it is, the more professional it will look. I don't make the rules. That's just how it is. That is just how it is. Now, in my case, I have a different name on those platforms, so I want them to show kind of uh, if you have the same name, you can just put the three logos and then put one tag. Right. I don't know about the placement yet, so I'm going to go to Twitter. I'm going to go to effects at the bottom here. I'm going to click color overlay. I'm going to click on the color and then I'm going to color pick this. Right. Boom. Nice. And I'm going to hold alt, click on the effects, drag up. Release it on the YouTube, do the same thing for Twitch. Boom. OK, I can see that this distance is not the same, I believe. Let's try to make it kind of there we go like that. Now let's just type. Let's just type the names. And in this case, it doesn't have to be the same font. You can have like one major font for titling and then another font for like little details. Uh, that's not the same color, is it? What is going on? Let's make this uber small. Let's make sure we have the same color. That was weird. In this case, it's a matter of testing to see if you want to see here. This is like the full caps effect. You decide if you want stuff to be full caps here. I don't want it. <laughs> Let me pick another font, Bebas, for this so it's more visible and the tracking needs to be a little tight. Um, if you're struggling with that, with the font, you can just Pick the select tool, control T or control alt T if you're using photo P. And then just resize, leave some space in between the letters and the next icon just to separate it a little bit. And I'm going to hold alt while I still have the move tool selected. Hold alt, move this around. I can't see because there's so many guides, but I can move it again. Pretty nice. It can be close. Of course, my name on YouTube is not level photo. It's yeah, level. OK, boom. We're going to duplicate it again, holding alt and then dragging. I'm holding shift also to not um, move from this axis. There you go. Yeah, level except on Twitch. I don't have a space in my name. Boom. There you go. Pretty clean. I could move Twitch over, but I don't know if I want to do that. Let's see. Yeah, I kind of want to do that. <laughs> OK, let's place our text on top of everything or you can place them, you know, uh, Twitch with the Twitch text just so you can come back and change it later on. I'm not going to do that, though. Also, I need this to be way closer. And then select Twitch. I'm holding control to select two layers and let's just move this. 
like that. Now, there are sometimes things look closer than they are, or they look further apart. In this case, this is actually closer than this, right? The space here is closer here, but it doesn't matter because it looks like there's more space because the lettering is different. So we're going to push it just like that. All right, not bad, not bad. I actually don't like the size of the icons, and this is going to be a pain. But oop, I am going to select the icons individually and resize them. Yes, that feels way clean, cleaner. All right. And then for the labels bar, I'm going to be using a rectangle. So here, rectangle tool, boom, click, drag, whatever. All right, make it a real rectangle by going here and dragging this. OK, um, we actually want this to be black. Not really. Let's click here to have access to everything. We do want it to be a different color, though. And this is not helping. Let's just go here, select it and go slightly darker. That's not slightly. Color pick. Better. Nice. I just want it to be barely visible here, but of course, on other screens, it's going to be very visible. And here, basically, just like the social media, what we want is a like icon for everything. In my case, if I want like top donator or top cheerer, I want the cheer icon. I want the donator icon, anything that resembles it, like a heart would be a follow. A crown, for example, would be like a prime sub or a sub. A star can also be a sub, uh, but people usually figure that stuff out if you're smart with it. Um, of course, I have my stocks. <laughs> I'll have, you know, diamond shape here for the bits. I'll have a heart if I want a follow or a star for a subscribe. Um, it's fine. It's fine. Um, or I can go and click custom tool shape by holding the click here. And I've saved the diamond shape, I believe, or at least one of them. There you go. So I have a sharp one. And I also have like kind of a rounded one. I'm going to use the sharp. Uh, I'm going to use the rounded one. <laughs> it's like that. OK, I'm going to make it real small. Go back, double click. And here you can choose if you want it to be full like that. You don't have to. Or you can just choose the outline since it's a shape, right? It's a shape layer. Where is it? I didn't see where it was. A uh, bit rounded. Let me bring it all the way up so I'm not confused. So this could be fill or you can. Cancel the fill here, go to stroke and then pick that color. In that case, well, <laughs> why is the stroke is like pattern right there. There you go. And then you can, of course, clear around with the thickness. Come on, I get now with the thickness. I think I might go for the outline look. Yeah, I think that's cleaner. So clean, so, so clean. Of course, the text doesn't have to like have the exact same. Um, I could put a white here. I feel like it would benefit some for, uh, from some white a little bit. Maybe the time. Of course, it's not a real timer. You would have to create a, an actual timer and use a similar font just to add in your broadcasting software like that. I think that kind of matches the glasses just showing, hey, there is a little bit of white in there. It is part of the color scheme for sure. We might even add some lines just to make sure. But yeah, I'm liking how it looks so far. Top cheerer, um, let's say top donator. In this case, oh, one tip that I'm going to give you for making overlays like that is don't use this. For example, if you're using this, if your bits is just a bit shape, use just a dollar sign. Don't put a dollar sign with a round around it. OK, like your icons are either your icons or they're an icon with a circle around it. Don't mix it up. Just keep one clean. You can see here um, it's just a pure icon right there. There's no circles. There's no rectangles or whatever around it. So in this case, I'm just going to press T, bring up my text tool, and I'm going to type money, money sign. And um, double click here to select it all and then just pick the color. There you go. And then here I can just control T. I guess in that case, it won't be an out. It will not be an outline, which might be a problem. Maybe I don't want it anymore. Uh, if I put an outline on this, there's no easy way of doing Well, there is an easy way of doing it. It's just going to effects, stroke, picking the color. Right. And then uh, lowering the fill on the layer top right. Um, the stroke is. 
too thick press one there you go for example not bad it makes a very complex shape compared to this one that's my only issue but it's not bad we can size it up if you want to to make sure everything is clean boom i don't know why it's giving me that guy but whatever and then donator boom 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 and then maybe subscriber you can either use a crown or a star as i said let's go see what we have i think a star will do fine those icons are big i know i'm gonna change them later okay not bad not too bad size it and that's decent you can put them all together just to resize them together holding control to select them all and then holding alt here so i can drag from the center and uh yeah then you pick the order that you want in my case bits because it's um it happens more often to get bits than donation than subs let's go with subs second and donation last something like that of course you're gonna add the label in 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 your broadcasting software i could add the text just to show you an example of what it would look like but i don't think that that's necessary if you're a streamer you know how a labels bar look right right this doesn't look right i'm gonna hold here get my selection tool and that's how i like to measure of course it's probably other ways and as you can see i'm far from the same size you can also press ctrl r to have the rules appear or disappear and you can click on them drag them and you can see where you want your stuff to be basically for example here this is where the dollar sign is supposed to be uh, control d to deselect and then boom dollar dollar bills y'all press v to get the move tool and there it is but as you can see it's not the same space all the way through with our rectangle so we can either select all of them or or extend the rectangle or something like that or we can use this again that is m for the select tool whatever And then in that case, you can, you know, do it like this. And then you can see, oh, okay. I need my rectangle to be V for the move tool. It needs to be there and with a little bit of margin around there, right? Boom, that's the rectangle. Press control T, uh, hold shift to stretch it. There it is. Nice. And now this is all together in one thing. Uh, although I made the rectangle before the text here and bring that up. Just to make sure that this is all together. I'm holding shift, selecting everything. So the rectangle, the three icons, control G. Now they're one group. I can move them around as much as I want. Now there's one thing that I didn't mean to do that. One thing that I kind of realized here is that I don't want my labels bar to be solid like that. You can press control period to turn off the to hide the grids so i don't want it to be solid i actually want it to be black but slightly transparent so what i'm going to do is select it here double click on the icon go pure black and then i'm going to lower the fill until it gives me a color that i hello yeah a color that i like so that way if i add it to any other scene it will just be slightly transparent I could legit call it call it a day here <laughs> if i go back to that background image you see like the the round shape here i can click on it and then create a new layer just on top of it i can do the opposite i can go ahead and and pick white for example press d to reset the colors press x to flip them press b to get your brush get a big old brush there you go zero hardness and 15 percent. i could do this for example and then this, and this, again using a mouse, and then I can lower the opacity or the fill. That's like one of the cleanest. <laughs> That's like one of the cleanest starting soon screen you'll ever see. If you have a logo or something, you can put it like top right or maybe top left. No, nah, top right. Um, I do have a logo. Let's see what it would look like if it was slightly we can make it we can make it even better like we can make it more golden we can actually add ha, add gradients to make it more more golden shiny and all that's my logo it's a tiny version of it there we go 
let's say that I want this here. Okay. I'm going to go to the effects and I'm going to add a color overlay. In that case, you guessed it. That's the color. I want it to be even smaller, actually. Like that. Would you look at that? This looks like a website. <laughs> Should have just look like, looks like a website. Now we're not done. We're obviously not done because uh, we have those big, big streaks of gradient here. I'm going to show you the trick that I use. Um, I'm just looking around to make sure that everything is good. You can add some lines if you want to, to make it look maybe a little more, a little cleaner. Line tool, let's go with two pixels, not one. And we can go like there and add maybe a line here. Boom, nice. And it can be white for center. You know, that's also pretty clean. That's not bad. Just make sure the space in between is equivalent. I'm eyeballing it. I don't know. That looks good. Can lower the opacity, make it more gray, and also affected by the gradients in the background. I think that could help too a little bit. Nice. If you want to change some of the um the text color, let's find it here. Double click to select everything. Make sure you select one of them, for example. Boom. That one could be white. Stream starting soon. I think that's pretty cool. It's pretty decent. I like it. All righty. There's so much more stuff that I could do, but let me let me just add the um I'm gonna duplicate that background gray layer. Duplicate it because it's a shape right now. We don't want it to be a shape. We're gonna merge it with those two. Okay, so this is kind of destructive retouching, but whatever. Hold shift, have three of them. Remember that I duplicated just in case I mess up, right? And I'm gonna right click. I'm going to click merge layers and now I have one layer with all that going on. And the cool thing here is that I can go to filters and then add noise. Boom. Now you do want to add noise. You want it to be monochromatic. You don't want, you know, you don't want um, colored noise and we can lower it. But as you can see, you see, okay, there's a lot of noise on the screen right now, but you don't see the gradient lines anymore, right? Everything is smooth super duper smooth so this is what we use this is the technique that people use when they don't want you to see their gradients so i can't i basically cannot see the noise at all almost i also have a light straight up in my face <laughs> but i can uh I, the gradient is super smooth so let's go for 0.4 maybe nice 0.4 works just fine for me okie dokie now this is the part where if you want to go wild you can actually lower the opacity a little bit if you know there's too much of that of whatever you just added lower the opacity slightly okay remember if you lower if you lower too much you might get those lines back but i think that's nice all right there of course the glasses this is wide so you can add like a curves adjustment to make it like super duper white and uh, you can even make it shine if you want to you can go on google images find some like lens flares and overlay them on top of it uh the the possibilities are endless really but i just wanted to show you like basic how much time like technically i've been i spent like about an hour it's 58 minutes right now and um yeah just to make a pretty clean looking overlay just like that will i ever be as cool as the guy in this overlay i don't know but let me know what you think and uh, hopefully you learned something just a little bit i could have gone over the glasses and add the same color just to make sure that everything matches you could probably add like some shapes or some some light effect behind the character but I didn't want this video to be two hours long, so uh, hopefully that does it and um, hopefully you like it, okay? If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you would like to see more videos like that, please let me know because, you know, I, I don't know what you want, okay? Just let me know what you want. <laughs> Once again, I used fo Adobe Photoshop to make this. I did not use a tablet. I could have I right there, but I used a mouse, so you can do it too. If you don't have access to Adobe Photoshop, you can use photop.com. Um, I've made other tutorials with it. I'm just like, I just wanted to go fast and I didn't want to have any issues. So that's why I went with Photoshop because Photoshop is installed on my computer and Photopea relies on the internet and I have crappy internet. <laughs> what else? So, due to the nature of what it is, how simple it is, and also the fact that I use my face, I'm not going to make this available. You know how to do it. It's literally a gray screen with some text above it, right? You can do this. I believe in you. So I want you to go out there and make it. And if you make one, I want you to tag me, post it, take a screenshot, uh, post it on Twitter and then tag me in it. Okay. I love seeing what you guys come up with based off of uh, my tutorials. But that being said, if you're looking for some other pre-made overlays, you don't have the time to work an hour on an overlay, go to gumroad.com slash level because 
Over there, there are some free overlay packs, animated overlay packs, and very affordable overlay packs, okay? None of them are expensive. And uh, I will see you guys next time. Go out there, make me proud, get level, out.